and his name is John C. As you can see by my presentation here, the async workflow is significantly better than the coroutine workflow, but let me show you why. Hey boys, so I've got this little scene here. We've got a shape manager, and then we've got these three shapes here, and there's just two scripts, the shape and the shape manager. So I'll show you the shape first. So all it is is one coroutine here that takes in a duration, and for the duration, it will just rotate uh, the shape. And we're using yield return null here as we're just wanting to wait to the next frame and then repeat and then wait to the next frame until we're all done. Next, I've got the shape manager, which just has a reference to my shapes. And then uh, the button in the scene will click this and it will just loop over the shapes and start all my coroutines. Uh, each loop will just add a little bit of extra time. So the result of that will be this, just the shape spinning. As you can see, each one lasts for a little bit of extra time. And if we want, we can just keep clicking it and it will speed up and speed up as they are all stacking. Cool bananas. So the first thing we're gonna do is convert this uh, workflow to the async workflow, as opposed to the coroutine workflow. So to do that is quite simple. I'm going to just copy this and let's change this function first to asynchronous. So we want to remove IE numerator and let's make this async. And for now let's return void. And then down here, instead of using yield return null, we will now await task. And this is in the system threading tasks namespace yield, which is almost the equivalent uh, to yield return null. I'll talk about this a little bit later. And that is all we have to do to convert uh, a coroutine into an asynchronous function. So that's pretty easy. So save that. And then across here in our shape manager, we now don't need to start coroutine. We can just directly call it just like that. All right, so now in our Unity editor, let's see. And as you can see, it does the exact same thing. Uh, but what is the benefit here? I mean, all we've really done is uh, made the code a little bit cleaner, a little bit shorter, right? We don't have to call uh, start coroutine here. Um, this is about the same. So to get into the benefits of this, uh, we need to start talking about use cases. And before I continue, right in this, I'm just rotating a shape, right? But in your game, you could be doing anything from uh, waiting for a, an attack animation or a missile or moving a character, you know, any, any kind of game logic, uh, just replace this rotation with, with that, okay? So the first use case will be, what if we would like this uh, these to run sequentially, right? One after another, making sure that the last one finishes uh, before we begin. So using coroutines, you might achieve that like this. So you've got your three coroutines here, and then you've got another coroutine uh, where you're yielding the results of the, uh, of the coroutines themselves. So this will actually run sequentially. This one will finish first, and then this one, and then this one. Um, alternatively, you might do something like this. So you might have, uh, coroutines and then you're, you're chaining your coroutines, uh, which can get hella messy. A uh, horrible way to work, to be honest. Uh, I used to do it though before I, I, I changed many, many years ago. So that, that's how you would uh, traditionally achieve sequential in coroutines. For us though, it's a lot more simple. So uh, right now, we're just returning void from this rotate for seconds. Uh, so what we need to actually do is go back here and instead of returning void, we need to return a task. Now a task, if maybe you've dabbled with JavaScript, a task is similar to a promise. So what it is, is we're saying, all right, give us the result of this function. Uh, if it's asynchronous, give us a task so that we can monitor if it's done, how long has elapsed, uh, if we wanna cancel it, if it's a long running uh, task, for example. Another thing you may have noticed is that we're actually returning something here, yet we don't actually have to physically say return, uh, you know, object or whatever uh, in our function. C Sharp just uh, already knows that, you know, this is, this is an async function. Uh, you're saying to return a task. So I'm just going to return this asynchronous object 
uh, for you. There's, there's no reason for us to actually have to do it every single time. So now back on our shape manager, you'll see here, I'm getting this squiggly here because it's saying, this is an asynchronous function, but you're just calling it, which means it's not gonna wait, it's just gonna continue. We can fix that by now making this one an async function, and we can simply say, I wanna await this function call now. So now it's going to go to the first iteration and this is going to complete before going to the second iteration. So let's actually see that in action. This one will go, then that one will go, and then that one will go. So as you can see, that is significantly cleaner than doing something with coroutines like this. Uh, <clears throat> especially if you were doing the, uh, the chaining ones where you'll start coroutine and you're chaining to the next ones. Uh, very, very easy, but it gets more powerful than that. Let's say we don't actually wanna run these sequentially. We wanna run these synchronously, so all at once, uh, but we still want to make sure that they're all done before we continue to our next logic. So, as an example, I'm going to make a serialized field here, game object, and this is just going to be my finished text. And if I go back into Unity here, I've actually made just this little finished text here, just like that. So I'm going to assign that into my shape manager. And just to make it uh, reusable, I'm going to say at the start here, finish text dot set active equals false. And then down here at the bottom, I'm going to say finish text set active true. Now let's actually make this uh, synchronous. So we obviously don't want to await this or else it will be sequential, but we do want to keep track of this because this is a task, remember? This is returning a task. We need to keep track of it to make sure that they're all finished. So we can create a little collection here, tasks equal new task. And the size of it is going to be the same as what we're iterating here. Cause we, kn we know that there's three shapes. So we're gonna perform, we're gonna, we're gonna hold three tasks. Now down here, we can say tasks.i is equal to this task. Now we've got our three tasks. So what we can do is we can await task dot when all and just send in our tasks array. So this, as soon as this is called, these will start, start rotating straight away. Uh, so they're all gonna start rotating together and the, but they're all gonna be rotating at different time lengths. We don't necessarily know these arbitrary time lengths. Uh, when it gets to here, this will wait for all three of them to complete before continuing. So let's see that in action. Play. And as you can see, they're all starting. And there we go. And now our finished text has shown. Beautiful. And to give you a better use case, uh, say you're doing a tactics game where you've got like five enemies and five uh, friendlies and they, they all attack at the same time. So all the enemies attack and then all the units, uh, players attack. You could loop through all of your uh, enemies and attack. Some of them might be casting a missile. Some of them might be, you know, swinging a two hand weapon, uh, who knows? And they could be going for any number, like any, any amount of time. So you could just call them all, put them all into a task array and then wait for them all to finish. With coroutines, you can do like messy things. Like for example, you could send in an action here. This will be a callback. And then when you when when the task finishes, you could do callback, right? And then when you're actually calling these things, you could be like start coroutine, whoops, action one. And then in here you could set your callback. And now you could have like a private variable up here, private int uh, enemies finished attacking. And you could say like that plus plus. Right, and then you could have a you could have some kind of while loop that's constantly checking have all the units finished attacking, uh, and then and then you could uh, and then you could action it and then continue. Uh, basically, it's 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 messy. Uh, also, you could if all these scripts were in the same script, you could you know you could just do that without the callback, but. Uh, to be honest, it's pretty horrible. It's, it's, a, it's a crappy way to work and it makes code super unclean in my opinion. This is incredibly simple. And I, I'm, I'm setting this, these uh, rotate for second tasks to this, but as long as it's a task, it does not matter what it is. This could be any number of functions 
you can just slam them all into the um, into the tasks list and it will all work exactly the same. If you don't like using arrays because you think they're a little bit uh, rigid, you can just make a, uh, a list here of task and then here task, you can just say tasks add and then just chuck that in like that. And that will work just fine as well. Another thing you could do possibly is you could, let's say that this starts at one and then our first one, our first shape, we can actually run sequentially. So let's await this uh, 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 like that. Uh, actually, no, that's our first one. So zero. So this one will be running sequentially and then these ones will be running uh, synchronously. So let's see what that does. That one will finish and then those ones will go. So very, very flexible. Now, I have not even told you about the most powerful thing of the async workflow over a coroutine workflow. And that is that async functions can actually return data, okay, which you cannot do in coroutines. So let me show you. So let's make an async function here. Now, when you're returning something from an async function, you need to wrap it in this task object. And let's say just we're turning an int, then this will be called get random number. And then in here we'll say var random number is equal to random unity engine range. And let's make it between 100 and 300. And because we're in an async function, let's make it a little bit interesting and actually await that amount of time. So task dot delay, send in our random number. Now, one thing to note uh, when using tasks over a coroutine is that coroutines use, um, well, Unity as a whole uses floats as seconds. So 1.2 is 1.2 seconds. Uh, with C Sharp, uh, with tasks in C Sharp, they use milliseconds. So here you can see I'm, I'm, I'm waiting anywhere between 100 to 300 milliseconds, which would be 0.1 or 0.3 in Unity standard, okay? So for example, also, if you're, if you're using Unity units, uh, and let's just call that delay, to use that here in a task, you could cast it to an int, and then you could just do uh, delay times 1000. And that will do the same thing. It will convert 1.2 into 1,200 and then uh, you'll be good to go. But we're, we're not accepting anything here. We're just saying, just wait for the random number and then we will return random number. So now we can say, let's just copy this out and we can say var random number is equal to get random number. And then we will print random number. So if we go back to Unity now, let's just not maximize it and press start. Aha, uh -huh. so this is obviously not what we wanted to return. So this is an asynchronous function, but I did not await it here. And if you do not await an asynchronous function, it will return the task object as opposed to the value, the result of the task. So what you can do with this task is, as you can see, if I'm hovering over this, you'll see that it's this of task of type task int. And with this, I can just check, is it canceled? Is it completed? And uh, if I wanted to, I could actually cancel the task. So if you're doing like, for example, a, uh, a button click and it will do a long running task on some kind of UI thing, um, the, you might wanna give the user to cancel it if it's taking too long. Where So then now that you've got this reference to this task, they click the button, you cancel the task, it stops running. Okay, that's a little bit deeper than what I wanted to go for this uh, for this video. So for now, I'm just going to await it. And as you can see, if I hover over it now, it's it's actually the int. So if we press play, we can press start and we'll get our random numbers after it's awaited it. Easy peasy. And if you're trying to call an async function, uh, but not from an async function, you obviously can't use the await keyword here. So an alternative is to say get awaiter dot get result. And that will be the same thing. It will give you the integer number. Another way to do it, which is a little bit, looks a little bit cleaner is to just say results. But the problem with this is if you've got a uh, try catch loop in here, right? And you've got some custom ex exception here and you throw it, 
uh, once it actually gets up to here, it will just give you a really generic error and it won't give you your proper error. So it is actually always better to use this ugly thing here to get the result if you're calling it from a synchronous function. So that was all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. It's just kind of like a surface dive of coroutines versus async. Uh, if you start experimenting with them both, I can pretty much guarantee that you're going to enjoy the async workflow over the coroutine workflow. One caveat, uh, which I have noticed and it's not really documented or that I can't really find any workarounds for is that uh, async workflow does not work in WebGL. So if you're making a WebGL game, just use coroutines and save yourself uh, a lot of heartache of having to refactor all your code, which happened to me. Uh, other than that, uh, there are more advanced techniques to the async workflow. For example, you've, we've got access to parallel uh, 4H loop and for loop, which means instead of sequentially going through your collection and doing something with it, you can grab as many threads as you've got and do them all at once. So if you want a, a more advanced workflow uh, tutorial, just let me know and I'll make one. Uh, otherwise, I hope this has helped. If you liked it, subscribe, like, and I will see you for the next video. See ya.